Hey, what's up? Unfortunately, these cars, the 1997 highest behind me and any highest, especially with a 1KZ powered engine, has a bad reputation for overheating. That's not really justified because it's pretty hard to overheat these things and they are really robust. So I want to cover off three things uh, that are usually the biggest culprits when it comes to these things getting hot under the collar uh, and what you can do to mitigate those issues. All right, first things first is the gauge water temperature sensor. It's super important because in my experience, not just with the Toyotas, but with Mitsubishis and an Isuzu and a Nissan as well, uh, a couple of Nissans, uh, they, once they get old, they start to send incorrect data to the gauge. In almost every case, it's been about one quarter less on the temperature gauge than what it actually is. And this thing did it as well. So as soon as I got this car, it never got up to full operating temperature, uh, which is why the torque converter wasn't locking up. That was the engine ECU water temp sensor, uh, which is separate to the gauge. Um, but I also replaced the gauge uh, temp sensor. And all of a sudden, hey, I didn't do anything else. It was now reading accurate and showing me that, yes, in fact, it was up to running temperature. The danger there is if it's not accurate and you're like, you're cruising along on a really hot day and it does start to overheat. By the time it's showing like three quarters up on the temp gauge, it's actually well into the red. And that's where you cause like massive amounts of damage because people look at it and they're like, well, it didn't really overheat that much. Yeah, no, it did. Your gauge is inaccurate. So yeah, if you get one of these, make sure you change the gauge water temp sensor at least. Ideally, you change the gauge and the ECU water temp sensor. All right, secondly, the radiator cap and the coolant. So radiator cap on these things, the earlier models were 13 PSI, the older models are 16, oh, sorry, the later models are 16 PSI like this one. If you don't have the right pressure cap, say you've got a 13 PSI cap on a car like this that needs a 16 PSI cap, obviously the more pressure you put the cooling system under, uh, the more temperature is required to make that boil, if that makes sense. So on a really hot day, if you're cruising along uh, and you're going up a hill and you're boosting it, the turbo's on boost and things like that, if you have a 13 PSI radiator cap that's really old and worn out maybe, um, that spring's gonna give up a lot quicker than what it should do, especially if it had a 16 PSI radiator cap. That means the coolant will get hotter and it'll boil over a lot faster and all of a sudden you'll be overheating. So make sure you've got a decent, ideally a new radiator cap on your old higher super custom. And then the second part of that is the coolant that the radiator cap is sitting in. Make sure it's clean. Every workshop that I've worked in, when it comes down to doing like a coolant flush on a car, they all do the same thing. And it's really disappointing. And I get why they do it. They don't have time, blah, blah, blah. It's all about efficiency. Most people don't keep their cars for very long. So it's just about, you know, replacing a tiny amount of coolant. What they do is they undo the drain plug on the radiator, the radiator drains empty, they redo the drain plug, and then they fill the radiator up with coolant, new coolant. The trouble is the heater cores, all of the little valleys in the head and the block, um, all of the hoses and pipes and fittings, the thermostat housing, the water pump, it's still full of old coolant. So ideally, if you are gonna do a coolant change on this, flush it out properly. You don't have to remove the radiator hoses on these things because you've got the heater hoses, two easily accessible heater hoses uh, underneath the passenger side of the van that you can undo and then like back flush it with a garden hose from there. But yeah, whatever you do, flush the system out properly and put in 50-50 um, demineralized water and good coolant. Red or green coolant, what's the difference? Well, we're not gonna get into like organic, hybrid organic phosphates, things like that. Run red coolant. The best coolant you can buy is Toyota Long Life Red. Like, even if you don't have a Toyota, put Toyota Long Life Red in it. It's the best coolant any manufacturer makes. Maybe Caterpillar makes better, but I've heard arguments about that. Toyota Red is the best stuff. It protects cast iron really well, so you've got a cast iron block. Protects aluminium really well, as well as a whole bunch of other things like copper, brass. There is, you know, different metals in your cooling system. Might be in the thermostat, might be in the water pump. Does a great job of protecting rubber seals, gaskets, um, all of those different things, hoses and pipes, it is the best coolant to use. Uh, demineralized water, yeah. Don't be that guy that says, hey, if I use demineralized water, then it's gonna start pulling minerals out of the engine. No, oh, man, come on. Ugh. Don't think like that, don't be that dumb. Use demineralized water, it's not gonna start dissolving your engine block. So, uh, speaking about engine coolant, if the car hasn't been maintained properly and the coolant's bad, 
it may have built up like sediment inside the radiators and all the little pipes and passageways and that can restrict the flow of water significantly even like a little bit can drop the radiators efficiency down by like 30 percent when you need it the most that's when you want the radiator to be working at 100 percent 100 percent capacity 100 percent flow so yeah if your cooling system does have like some sediment in it some crust put like a radiator flush in it um, like a bottle of radiator flush and then drive it around for like a good couple of hours just to dissolve all of that and get it suspended in the coolant so that when you flush it out it takes all that gunk out with it all right the last thing and the most common cause for these things overheating sitting in traffic driving uphill all of that is the viscous fan hub when that fails or when that starts working uh, not as effectively as it should that's when these things start overheating that fan is a viscous coupling i'm not going to explain what it does or how it works and things like that basically when it gets really hot the fan engages like an electric fan but it's mechanical the hotter it gets the more the fan engages uh, with the engine and so when it's really hot you'll hear that fan roaring away like when i i get out of this thing on a really hot day in summer um, and i leave the engine running uh, one time in particular i got out it was 45 degrees celsius it's christmas day last year actually and i left the engine running and i was just shocked at the amount of heat that the fan was pluming out from the underneath the front wheels uh, it felt like i turned the oven on at home on full whack and then just opened it up and you get that hit of hot air that's what it felt like and that fan was just roaring away you'll hear it so make sure your viscous fan hub is working properly a good tip is if you're not sure if it's working properly i'm not going to explain to you how to check it and things like that if it's not working properly and you want to replace it you can get aftermarket fans um, there's a lot of speculation about the quality of them and some say it lasts just as long some say it's better some say it's worse uh, but what you can do is get an aftermarket viscous fan put that on your car and then with your original fan you can uh, dismantle it split it open clean it out and then go to any Toyota dealership and buy what's called silicon oil and then you can re-oil it seal it all up put it all back together so that if the aftermarket viscous fan fails you can just swap it out for your rebuilt oem fan and then just keep doing that as the years go on obviously that's only if you want to keep driving it for many many years uh, anyway that's my cooling system tips the water temperature sensor for the gauge that's number one to make sure that you've got accurate readings the proper radiator cap and good engine coolant is number two and then the viscous fan hub is number three take care of those three things you should be all right Alrighty, thanks for your time. Uh, take care, goodbye.